we think about 30 to 40 percent of all patients check this out now will regain the weight what Hey guys, I'm Dr. Duck Bone, world famous bariatric surgeon, author of Ultimate Gastric Sleeve Success, my number one bestseller on Amazon, author of 13 other books, a couple more on the way. I'm working on right, one right now that's going to be pretty dang cool. Now, welcome to uh, this broadcast. Tonight we're talking about relationships. This is video number two of our four part series on long term success. If you didn't catch the last video, we talked about the food basics because trust me, there's so much misinformation about food basics that you can really screw up your surgery. So if you didn't see that one, click the link and, uh, and find it, search it on my YouTube channel. Make sure you watch that, that video. Tonight we're gonna talk about relationships. Because I wanna tell you, if something's gonna screw up your surgery, it's relationships, right? So first of all, comment, just put a one in the comment section if your relationships have changed after weight loss surgery, okay? And by that I mean it could have gotten better, it could have gotten worse, you could be divorced, it could be you lost your best friend, maybe you don't speak to your sister anymore, Maybe you changed jobs because you got tired of the negativity at work. We're going to talk about all of that tonight in a very simple package, right? So I was thinking about how do I want to teach this to you guys, and I was like, oh, I'll talk about work, I'll talk about family. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you some mind-blowing shit that's going to, you're going to be able to apply it to all different areas, okay? So first thing I want to tell you is this. Um, this will apply to all relationships, all of them, okay? So your work, your family, romantic relationships, old romantic relationships, new romantic relationships, we're gonna, this is gonna apply to all of them, okay? Um, you know, a lot of you guys, I, some of you guys, you know, you guys marry or you start dating the same ex, over and over again and um, it's the same dude trust me just in a different body he's just in a different body but you gotta you gotta work on yourself first okay I've done other videos about that so I'm not gonna really harp on that tonight I want to teach you some new new cooler stuff okay so number one let me ask you this question let me ask you this question why did you have weight loss surgery Put in the comment section why you had weight loss surgery. And I want to give you a hint. There's only one right answer, yo. Only one right answer, okay? A lot of you guys are going to say, I wanted to lose weight. I wanted, it was for my health. I got tired of my diabetes. I got tired of my sleep apnea. I got tired of not having any energy. I wanted to be around for my kids. I wanted to be um, around to see them grow up. Um, or it just hurt too much, my knees were hurting too much, or I didn't feel good about myself. Those are valid answers, but they're not the right answer, okay? So, number one, why did you have weight loss surgery? Loss surgery. Okay, here's the answer. You wanted your life to change that's it that is the only right answer okay I've been spending the last couple of months really trying to push this message to you guys the only reason why you wanted to have weight loss surgery because you wanted your life to change that's the only reason why you wanted to go through with it so think about this what if you know, you went to some seminar for your surgeon and he or you your first appointment and your doctor says to you, yeah, we can have you can have weight loss surgery. Mary, you qualify for weight loss surgery. But after surgery, your life's going to be exactly the same. You're going to go, where do I sign up for that? No, you wouldn't say that. You would say what? Fuck no. No. I'm not. No, no, doc. I don't want my life to be the same. I want to weigh less. I want to have more energy. I want to be around. You know what I mean? Like, no, I think shit's got to change. That's what you're going to say, right? But 
Think about this. We think about 30 to 40 percent of all patients, check this out now, will regain the weight. What? What? One in three patients will regain the weight. That's what the studies are showing long term. There's one paper that said if your BMI is over 50, BMI over 50, you have about a 50% chance to regain the weight. Right? Dr. Vaughn, what does that have to do with, with relationships? Okay, what does that have to do with relationships? Let me ask this question. Why are so many people regaining weight? And you'll say, well, they just didn't make the change. They just weren't serious enough. They weren't committed. Fuck, that's not the right answer, yo. Because I want to tell you, every single one of you watching right now, every single one of you, when you were having surgery, you said, I, I'm not going to fail this. None of y'all said, Dr. Vong, let me show you. I'm going to fail this. <laughs> I'm so screwed up, Dr. Vong. Your surgery won't work on me. Like, I'm so messed up. The bypass won't work on me. But let me go ahead and do it anyway. None of y'all said that. Give me an amen. Come on. All of y'all said, yeah, this is it. I'm going to do it. I'm all by it. I'm going to be your poster child, Dr. Vong. I'm going to be your poster child. Didn't you say that? Of course you did. So everybody, 100% people, 100% of people, of patients, think, okay, think they will be successful, committed, and I'm doing it this time, Dr. B. I'm serious. Yeah, that they're serious. All of them. So why do 30% regain the weight? Why do a third? Okay. In other videos, I've taught you this. Life equals relationships. Life is relationships. Everything that you have in your life right now you got from a stranger. Everything in your life right now, you got from a stranger. You bought your house from a stranger. Your boss was a stranger before he was your boss. Your husband was a stranger before you met him at the bar, right? <laughs> Everything you have in your life, you got from a stranger. At some point, I was a stranger to you. You didn't know me. Your surgeon was a stranger. Your doctors were strangers. Your teachers were strangers. They gave you information. They gave you knowledge. And by a stranger, I mean, now, if, if you don't want them to be a stranger, you have to have a relationship with them. You have you understand what I'm saying? So you have to have a relationship with your surgeon. Now, maybe some of you guys are regaining weight because... You, don't, you haven't followed up with your surgeon in years. And some of y'all bitches walking around going, well, they don't require it. They don't require it. Who the fuck cares if they don't require it? You, you have a telephone. You pick it up and say, hey, I'm struggling. I've regained 15 pounds. I need to come see the dietitian. I need to have a barium to swallow. I need to have uh, see the surgeon. Instead of saying, well, they just didn't require it. They just didn't require it. Do you know how many people post that shit on my Facebook stuff? It's ridiculous. Life is relationships, yo. Maybe we're regaining weight because we just don't talk enough about our relationships. We don't have a good enough relationship with a dietitian. You don't have a good enough relationship with your surgeon. You never, you, your husband really wasn't on board. You kept it a secret. I don't want people in my business. Dude, you know how stupid you sound when you say that? It's so bad because it's like, dude, everybody's going to know when you start losing weight. Everybody's going to know when you're walking around with your protein drinks and you're trying to get ready for surgery. Everybody at work's going to know when you take two weeks off from work, when you put in your uh, you know, forms, when you have a complication and now there's a GoFundMe page for you. Come on now. So you got to own this journey. Okay. You got to own this journey. I think a lot of people don't own this journey, okay? Think about that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna own the relationship, okay? We're gonna own the relationship. Now, I don't wanna spend too much time, because some of you guys are like, I watched a lot of Dr. V videos, which is awesome, I love you. You're my favorite, All right? So you're gonna say, 
he's going to talk about the most important relationship is with myself. <laughs> we all know that, girl. Right? I'm not going to talk to you. If, if you are a grown-ass woman and I have to tell you that the most important relationship in your life is the one with yourself, man, you got much deeper issues. You got more serious problems. That's a very simple, easy explanation for why you're overweight. Okay? Now, um, I got to get deeper than that because that, that makes for a nice meme. Like, oh, you know, there's that meme where the woman is like, uh, w I woke up one day and I decided to start loving myself again. And the, at the bottom it says, my, my body said, Oh, I've been waiting to hear you say that your whole my whole life. Like, <laughs> it makes for good memes. I get it, but shit don't fix anything for you. Does that make sense? What I'm saying. So let's fix some stuff. So let me tell you some stuff that's happening. All right. So you want to change. All right. Now part of the problem is when the change comes, you get scared. <laughs> you're like yeah i want change i want to lose weight yeah i want change and then i say well you know you might lose your husband no no no, no. he loves me he loves me. no no it's gonna change it's gonna change so everything everything will change everything so someone write that in the comment section for me and underline everything will will change it's not might change it's not might change right it's not only the things that i want to change will change dr vong no girl everything will change everything will change your marriage will change okay i want to talk about that in a little bit because i had some people piss me off when i was like you know if your marriage just stays the same some of you guys are like no my marriage is the same They're like no that means it's worse i want to talk about that right now okay so everything will change, including your relationships, and definitely not just the things you want to change. Everything will change. Okay, so here's you, <laughs> pre-op. Now, don't I'm not hating, okay? I'm just I, I have to give you a graphic <laughs> representation, okay? And let's say you're just not happy. All right, that's that's most people, okay? Now you have weight loss surgery, and if you're lucky. You know, at some point you're gonna be a little bit smaller, right? You're like, oh, I got thigh gap. I'll, throw, I'll draw you with a little thigh gap there. You got thigh gap, yay! And now you're smiling, right? Yay! <laughs> yay! I've got thigh gap. Okay, so <laughs> okay. Now here's <clears throat> here's what. So this this is an obvious change. Yes, people see it, they comment about it, they talk about your successes, they might talk to you to your face, they might talk to you behind your back, right? Obvious change. So circle here, here. Mental, that's not obvious. Give me some amens. All the mental changes you guys are having, not obvious. We see that you went from a size 25 to a size 4. Awesome. But what we don't see is your self-confidence improve. Or maybe your self-confidence doesn't improve. How the fuck would we know? We can't see it. Uh, uh, right? Maybe maybe you've gained some self-confidence. Maybe you're putting yourself out there. Maybe you're trying new things. Maybe you're speaking to strangers. Maybe you're, you want to go back for promotion. Maybe you want to go back to school, finish, get your degree. Maybe you finally want to start your own home business. But that part, we can't see. So we don't know what's going inside your head. Maybe you, were, you think in your head that you were happier here than you are now. There are patients like that. Comment if you're one of these patients. Like you're like, dude, I was, I was happier when I was 20 pounds heavier because at least I could eat more. I thought I, I think I look too skinny at five foot 
three and 180 pounds. Like, really? Five foot three, 180, you think you're too skinny? Five foot three, 150, you think you look good? Come on, right? So this is not obvious. Now, here's the point. So if this part, confidence, right? Uh, happiness, or it could be sadness. It could be insecure. We don't know, not obvious. So what's gonna happen to all, like all the other people, all your friends, right? Your coworkers are grumpy, right? When they see you, they don't know which version of you they're gonna get. <laughs> they don't know this journey that you've been on. So they're gonna be like, we don't know. Don't know. You have to think about that, okay? So that seems obvious because you're sitting there, yeah, they're strangers. Of course, Dr. Vong, they're strangers. No, bitch. I'm, no, this is your husband. This one's labeled husband. This one is your mom. This one's your boss. These are people you know that you have uh -huh, relationships with. Strangers, who cares? Until you form a relationship with them, it doesn't matter. But all these people you now have a relationship with. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? And they don't know what's happening in your life. They don't know what's happening inside your brain. And so your relationship's going to change, okay? Now, I think most of you guys would agree that you are better here. Is that correct? I mean, how many of y'all would go back here? You might. Some of you might. Some of you might want to go back to obesity. I mean, 33% of y'all, one in three. Well, want to go back. You did. Bruh. Nobody put it in your mouth. You were in control of what you put in your mouth to regain that weight. Okay? But for the most part, let's say, on average, you're feeling better here. Can fit in clothes, can travel, no more diabetes, more energy, right? As a general rule, you're going to be better here, worse here. Okay. If you are better here, if you are better here, and everything changes, including your relationships, then what should happen with your relationship with your husband? Anybody want to know? If you are better, then what will happen to your relationship with your husband? It should either get better or what? Worse. Never the same. Now, I said that on one of my posts on Facebook. I had some ugly, ugly people who said, Dr. Vong, you shouldn't be assuming. That's a jerk-ass answer you gave when somebody, somebody said, oh, my marriage is the same. I said, no, the same means it's worse. And I had all these angry women who were like, that's a jerk comment to say. I'm going to stop following you. Uh, I, don't, I don't care if you agree with me, but it's the truth. There is no same. There is no same. Somebody put that in the comment section. Nothing in your life will stay the same. Everything will change. It will either change for better or worse. There is no same. Got it? Your diabetes got better. You loved your surgeon, so your relationship with your surgeon got better. You had a complication. Your relationship with your surgeon not so good for a little bit, and then it got better once he got you through it. It will change. It never stays the same. Your marriage initially was better and then got worse when he became insecure, when he quit talking, when you found out he was gay. Your relationship was worse right after surgery because you were a bitch and you didn't want to eat anything and you felt terrible and you were uncomfortable and you were hurting and you took it out on your poor husband. But then eventually you lost the weight, you started feeling better and y'all started talking better and now your marriage got better. But it never stayed the same. If you think your relationship is staying the same, it actually means it's getting worse. It's just a matter of time. So I tell people this. <clears throat> Everybody 
everybody thinks their marriage is great. Not, not think. Let me rephrase that. Everybody knows their relationship is good. No, Dr. Vong, my relationship is good. We've been together 25 years. He loves me any reason. Until you walk in the door and you see the letter. Honey, I don't know what to tell you. I've decided to leave you for Jane at the office. But the second, but before you open that door, you knew, not think, you knew that your marriage was good. But it wasn't. Not from his perspective. My question to you is this. Think about this. You're sitting here assuming your marriage or your relationship is good. Have you ever asked? Have you stopped to ask? Right? Have you ever stopped to ask your husband, "Hey babe, I know I know you say nice things. I know you I know you've been with me on this whole journey, but but I mean, what do you think about this journey? Like what do you think about going vegan or what do you think about how we're sharing plates? Maybe he doesn't fucking want to share plates with you. <laughs> you guys are all like, ah, I just split with my husband all the time. What if he doesn't want to split with you the whole fucking time? He's like, damn, I just wish, I just want to, I want to order what I want to order. And you don't know it. And you're like, oh, my husband is so supportive. He, we just, we, see, my point is you don't know. And maybe, yes, maybe right now your marriage is still good. But at any moment, he, he could break. He could snap. You could end up in an argument. You could find out he's been bumping, like, with the secretary. He's been seeing your best friend on the backside. And trust me, this shit happens. All right? More likely scenario, because I read your comments. Um, most of you say stuff like, my husband became insecure. He didn't like the fact that I wanted to go out, that I like to dress up nice. Right? He just wanted to stay home. He always said, like, why do you have to go out? Like, my husband, comment, if your spouse, your significant other, got jealous, was always questioning you, why are you going? See, he was good when you were, like, here. And he was better when you were, like, a size 15. But now you're a size two, and he doesn't like that at all because you're getting too much attention. But you think it's all good until you get the notice, until you get the email, until you have the talk, until you come home and all his shit's gone, right? Okay, so better or worse, it's never the same. Every relationship, your boss, it's better or worse, never the same after surgery. Your co-workers, better or the same. Your kids. Dr. Vong, I had weight loss surgery for my kids. Okay. Is it better or the same? Or worse? The same means it's worse. So if you had your surgery for your kids, why aren't you spending more time with your kids? Why is your son hooked on drugs? Why, do you, why does your daughter blame you for obesity? Why is your daughter still eating junk and fast food? Oh, I can't control them. I, they won't eat what I eat. They don't want to eat healthy. They, I got to buy junk food and snacks for them. Fuck no, you don't. Why, why are we saying shit like this? Like that's acceptable. Your teenagers should not be overweight if you've had weight loss surgery. You understand that, right? Think about that. Why are your kids not losing weight? Right? So your relationship with your kids need to change. If you're, if you're losing, if you've had weight loss surgery and your kids are still eating junk, your relationship with your kids are worse. They're not better and they're fucking not the same. They're worse. You hear my plea? All right. I'll be right back with another tip. All right. So here's the next thing I want to explain to you guys that's really important. And it's, it's tied into... Uh, a, a talk that I've done before that's one of my most famous talks, okay? It's called The Filters Talk. So um, you can find it on YouTube. 
And, uh, in fact, if you look under the famous filter, t <laughs> I don't know, the famous filters talk, um, and it basically means that um, our our eyes are are not just viewers. Like we're not passively seeing things; they're actually projectors, um, and they project a movie of our lives. By that I mean like whatever happens. Have you ever had this experience? The same thing can happen to two people and they'll both experience it completely differently. Like I'll give you a very common scenario. The, it could rain one day and one person could be like, God damn it, it's raining and I didn't bring my umbrella. All upset, right? And the other, another person could say, oh my God, it's raining. I mean, I don't need to water my garden today. How amazing. I mean, it was so hot. It's kind of finally cooled us off. And who cares if I forgot my umbrella? I'll get, I'll get a little wet to work and you know, I'll be fine. Well, why do these two people see that same event two different ways? The answer is because they have what I call a filter over their eyes. It, it's like rose-colored glasses. It changes how you see the world, okay? So in my filters talk, what I said was that you have a filter, and I call it the obese filter, that you see the world through a certain way. And it processes how you see the world, if that makes sense. Like, maybe somebody who was trying to pay you a compliment. Like, oh, Mary, you look nice today. I like that red blouse on you. And maybe they were skinny. And through your obesity filter, you think, oh, that skinny bitch, she doesn't know. Your obesity filter says, oh, she, she wants something from me. My kids want something from me. That person wants something from me. Or how do they expect me to walk that far? Or uh, like I, I, I need, I'm hungry. I need to eat. Well, I mean, how come, you know, how could they possibly make me wait till noon to eat? Or why do they only give us 30 minutes to eat? That's an obesity filter. I can't afford fresh fruits and vegetables. I've died. I've tried every diet. Is an obesity filter. Let me go back to that real quick. You realize that you have not tried every diet, right? It's not possible. I've tried thousands of diets. N no, you haven't tried thousands of diets. You've tried a handful of diets for a short amount of time, and they all worked, but you just didn't do them long enough. That's an obesity filter. And what happened is in, in the obesity world, the weight loss world, the diet world, it becomes very common to say things like, I've tried every diet. I can't lose weight. It's too hard. Skinny ass bitches. This person doesn't understand. And I get this shit too, man. People go, Dr. Vong, somebody's going to say it. Watch. Dr. Vong, why should I listen to you? Have you ever been obese? God, I want to like bitch slap that person. They're like, like, have you ever been obese, Dr. Vong? Like, how would you know? How would you know what it's like? Like, who the, f like, you get cancer. I don't have to have cancer to know cancer is bad for you. If you get diagnosed with cancer, are you going to be like, I'm not going to that surgeon. He's never had cancer before. He doesn't know what I'm going through. That's the most stupid thing. That's an obesity filter to think that I can't understand you because I've never been obese or that other people can't understand how you're doing. Whoa, why? Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> okay. So now think about this. So now you're going to have weight loss surgery. Okay. So you have WLS. Oh, that looks like it looks like she's pooping on you. So now you have that skinnier version of you now, right? With the thigh gap. We like the thigh gap. Oops, it's terrible. Art is not my. I'm. I used to be a really good artist, believe it or not. Okay. So now you're happy. Yay, victorious. Okay. So you had weight loss surgery. Now you are better. Right question here's are you still seeing the world through this filter so are you still seeing the people in your lives through this filter if everything is going to change 
Why do you think your boss is still an asshole? Why do you think, why do you assume your spouse still loves you? Why do you assume that that recruiter would never hire you? Or why do you assume, remember everything in your life is from a stranger. Why do you assume that the admissions committee won't let you in? Why do you assume it's hard? I'll give you one, right? I'll give you a very common one. And this shit pisses me off. You have weight loss surgery and you see it on blogs and posts and comments and people write all the time like, oh my God, it's so hard. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. Like I did everything I could. Those bitches brought donuts to the office. But you know, I, I didn't succumb. I didn't have a donut. The struggle's real. Dude, that's your fucking fat filter. I don't walk around donuts going, oh, I better not eat that donut. Does, you understand what I'm saying? So you have this filter that is coloring your relationships. Because it's your obesity filter. Does that make sense? Now, this is everything we talk about when people say, oh, it's the mind games. I got to get my head straight. I got to. Dude, you need to go watch my filters talk. You need to understand that this, fil this obesity filter you have. And the filter includes everything. Everything. It includes everything you read in magazines, everything you see in television, soap operas, movies life experiences, music, who you hang out with, friends, family, your friends and your family, your relationships and your human experience is what has reinforced this obesity filter. And that's the hard part. This is the work. If you want to talk about the hard work, Dr. V, This is the hard work. This is what you got to work on, guys. This is what you have to do is undoing all of these years. Give me an amen if this makes sense to you, what I'm saying. Because your relationships are going to be either better or worse. Better or worse. Never the same. And what makes it better? What makes it worse? I promise you it's related to this obesity filter. Did you do the hard work? Did you take off this filter, looked at your husband in a different way, right? Did you look at them differently, okay? Now, I want to give you one final tip. One final tip. This is super important, okay? So this is tip number two. Tip number three is this. Let me ask you this question. Have you experienced any betrayal in, after you've lost the weight? Have you lost your best friend? Do you never, do you not see old, like, did you lose a bunch of friends? Did you quit hanging out with them? People say, I just quit eating what they eat, so they didn't want to invite me around anymore. Or they felt guilty eating around me, so they never invited me anymore. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Or, or it turned out that our marriage was already bad, so, you know, it just, he became insecure and, and the marriage broke up. See, these are assumptions. These are statements that don't really mean anything. I'm going to tell you something right now that I learned um, from Gordon Livingston, who wrote a book. He's a psychologist, psychiatrist, and he wrote one of my all-time favorite books. And you need to read this book, guys. Too soon old, too late, uh, too late smart. And I saw him do this interview on YouTube. And this is basically what he said. He was actually interviewing Shania Twain. <laughs> and Shania Twain was talking about how her marriage broke up and how a friend had betrayed her. And Shania actually had to work through this process with Dr. Livingston to forgive her friend. And it got, so, you guys remember Shania Twain, right? The country singer. 
And she even said to the point where she lost her voice. Like she literally, there were those quiet years where she didn't do music anymore. She literally could not sing anymore. It affected her voice, this, um, this betrayal by her friend. And Gordon Livingston said this, and it was super powerful, and I want to share it with you. He said, that betrayal, that hurt that you felt, was the price you paid for your wrong assumptions. And I was driving, and I was like, oh, shit. Somebody put that in the comment section. It's the price you pay for your wrong assumptions. See, you assumed when you were fat, you assumed they were your friends. You assumed that he loved you. You assumed that that's just the way it was. You assumed that you were powerless against food. You assumed that you were genetically inclined to be obese. You assumed that the world was evil. You assumed that you could trust her with your husband. And that betrayal is the price you have to pay. You assume you are powerless against food. Obesity is the price that you had to pay. Weight loss surgery is the price you had to pay for your false assumptions about food. I'm powerless around food. That is a false assumption. I, can, I look at food and I gain weight. That's a false assumption. Everybody's fat in my family. I can't help it, Dr. Vong. That's a false assumption. And you're having weight loss surgery is the price that you've had to pay. Your divorce is the price you've had to pay for your false assumption. The betrayal is the price you've had to pay. Your finances, if your finances are not where you think they should be, that's the price you're paying for your false assumptions. Now, I love you guys very much, but this is truth. Man, I cannot get any truer than this. I cannot be more real than this. I cannot... There is no sugarcoating this. There is no way to get around this. And I will probably lose a bunch of followers and a lot of people are gonna say I'm hating, I'm fat shaming. I'm... No, it's not. Anybody who, who's obese who says that they're being fat shamed on, you're the problem. Because here's the truth of the matter. At any point, watch me now, at any moment, you could decide to let go of this obesity filter, change it, pay all the debt that you owe, pay all the debt that you owe for your false assumptions. And at any moment, you can change your life because that's why you had weight loss surgery. You wanted your life to change. I love you guys very much. Remember, life is short. Don't waste it. Dr. V out. Hi, Dr. Vong here. If you love that video, I hope you will check out Velocity2020.com. I want to meet you in person. This is my big annual conference in Vegas. It's amazing. It's not just about weight loss surgery, but it's about taking your life up to the next level. You're going to meet the best people, the best speakers, the best audience possible. You're going to really take your life up to the next level. 2020 is all about vision, clarity, and focus. We're going to show you how to find your vision, what you really want to do with your life, get crystal clear, clarity, and then find your laser focus to do what you need to do to have the amazing life that you deserve. Hope to see you there.